Hello everyone, Mark the Pipe Poet. And um, if you haven't seen the previous video to this, go view it, then come back to this one. With that said, let us continue on with this one. So it was late last night that um, the snow was whipping around outside and I looked outside and almost in deja vu type of way, I remembered that my one year anniversary on YouTube of joining the pipe community was coming up. So I hurried and I went on last night to see, you know, when that was. And wouldn't you know, I missed my own anniversary. So, today we will have an observance of that and uh, to uh, start that off, I would like to thank each and every single one of you for subscribing, for liking, for commenting, for creating video responses, for messaging me, uh, for sharing all the information that you have shared with me. Um, it means a lot that you've done that, especially for a 21-year-old uh, to come into this community not knowing what to expect and hoping to bring other young people into the pipe smoking community just to be welcomed with open arms. I mean, it's, it means a lot. I cannot say enough how much it means. And um, I know once or twice I have managed to create quite a stir and get myself into trouble uh, within this community, but that's for the sake of conversation, for talking, sharing ideas and whatnot. And, just getting everyone involved in something, so. I thank you for that. Um, I just can't thank you enough. So. Here's to each and every single one of you. Thank you. The second purpose of this video is this. Uh, I was looking at this pipe this morning and I thought to myself, well, I wonder uh, if there are any others out there I like this pipe. And um, so I was looking around on pipes and cigars and then I caught myself buying things, which that'll be in a later date. And I was looking at the Nording pipes and Strangely enough, there weren't any like this. So I went to a site called Smoking Pipes, and I saw that they have a pipe exactly like this. But this pipe that I have right here belongs to a set called the Royal Flush. And much like this pipe, you know, in a Royal Flush you have the King, Queen, Ace, Jack so on and so forth, um, the Joker, uh, all these pipes are similar to one another, except for certain differences. For example, the stem being of the same design, but it being either white or black, the briar of the wood being completely different. Now, the one I'm looking at is the ace. Uh, it's still in the same tomato shape, but it's it has a black stem and it has more of an orange color to it. And um, with the queen, instead of the opening of the bowl being here, it's a little bit more this way. It's more on this side. So, the price for that pipe, $157.60. The original listing price was $197 flat. Needless to say, I do not think I will be buying that any time soon. But, um... Pipes are expensive these days, we know that. Uh, especially for higher-end brand names such as Nording or even Dunhill, where or even Peterson, which, you know, you can spend $197 flat, 
drop it on a pipe and, you know, that's added to your collection. I'm sure you will have uh, memories and experiences with that pipe. That's understandable. But when you look at, you know, lower end pipes such as uh, Dr. Grabau's or even the new K. Woody's, you spend 30 to $60 on a pipe and you think to yourself, did I really mean that? then again that's the sort of line that we're in with pipe smoking it's the collecting it's the you know the matching of our personalities and so on and so forth which is i have a question which i will pose in a different video later on about personalities okay so i know that this pipe belongs to a set all right well, what about the uh, manufacturer Eric Nording himself. Well, that was interesting because we all know the story of Dunhill. We all know the story of Peterson. But did you know Nording and Peterson have a shared history? It's true. Eric Nording uh, originally wasn't in the pipe smoking uh, or the pipe manufacturing business. He was originally a blacksmith. He began his blacksmith career in 1939 when he was at the age of 15. Now, what is going on in the, 19, in the late 1930s and early 1940s? Well, we have the Great Depression here in America, and we have the Second World War. So his family business was making razor blades, and his father taught him everything that he needed to know, and he proved to be very, very well skilled in machinery. So, he went to school for machinery and whatnot, and by the time he finished his education, he was ready to get out of the family business, and then that's when he started to turn his attention to pipes. His father was one who taught him how to smoke a, pro a pipe properly, and um, by the time he went into the pipe-making business, he actually smoked a pipe more effectively and everyone else around him, especially those who had been in the business for years. Now, he often visited Larson's shop in Copenhagen to buy supplies, but he began, uh, he, he began his interest in repairing pipes. And most of the repairs were done by a man named of, and I'm going to butcher this, I know it, Scothbo. So it was Scovbo who taught him, as eager as he was, everything that he knew. Um, and so, with Scovbo being skilled in making pipes, and Nording being skilled in machinery, they paired up. And they taught one another. Now, Nording began carving and whatnot, and the first pipes that came out were under the name of SUNS, which was an acronym for Scoffbo and Nording. Well, the business only lasted two years. It went under, and Nording took the financial responsibility, took care of the business, and then just changed it to Nording. I have a hiss in there. Anyhow, um... Excuse me. He said, I was a blacksmith. I could make anything out of metal if I had a drawing from work. So why not do the same with pipes? So then he began visiting pipe shops in the vicinity of the area. And he uh, asked these merchants and, you know, sellers and retailers if they had any customers who were interested in uh, specific designs or uh, specially carved pipes. And much to Nording's surprise that there was. So he instantly uh, began to start what is known as the golden era for Danish fancy pipes. Now, uh, he kept working and he kept improving this and... Uh, he kept uh, molding his uh, briar work. And in the 1970s, unlike the 60s, 
the demand for pipes drastically dropped. And this is where we see people like Peterson and Dunhill go out of business and just drop off the face of the earth. They shut up their shops, they stop manufacturing pipes, and they're done. They're gone. But, and this is where it's interesting, and what I said about Peterson, Nording used the money he had earned in developing his pipes in the 1960s, took over Peterson, the Irish Pipe Factory, since the factory was about to be moved from the Isle of Man, which is in Great Britain, to Ireland, and many of the workers were not willing to move and insisted on starting off on their own. Nording ran the Peterson factory as well as the factory he had in Denmark, and it was later in 1995 that he launched the first pipes in a series called the Hunting Pipe, which a new pipe every year since has been produced, and the theme is of an animal that is carved out of the briar. A total of about 20,000 pipes are produced every year. Roughly between 400 and 500 are made by Nording himself. And 300 handmaids are produced each month. So I could be holding a handmade pipe made by Eric Nording. question that I want to pose to each and every single one of you, and I know somebody out there has to have the answer. Did Nording, is Nording still uh, running the Peterson factory? Like, is he still under the, uh, the Peterson name? Does he run it? Does he manufacture, you know, does he create the pipes and whatnot? Or did he just buy them out and then keep the name? Um, is he running two companies at once? Is he only running the one, which would be his own and not Peterson? What is it? Um, somebody out there has to know the answer. And uh, it really doesn't say. It just says he bought them. He took them over. So that's the first question of the year. Does Eric Nording own Peterson? Because we see, and I'm so glad I kept this tin, the new Dunhill come out. We know Dunhill was originally in London, but it says the name Dunhill right on the back. The name Dunhill is trademark that is registered internationally, and then it says in very small writing, made in Denmark. So we know Dunhill is now in Denmark. Is Peterson also in Denmark, or is it still an Irish um, entity in itself? So. So there's a little history about Eric Nording for you and uh, the uh, unanswered question that I want to know. So, Stay warm, everyone. Smoke and be happy and enjoy yourselves because that is what life is all about. And thank you once again for a happy one year. Cheers.